area. I chose residential sector. One of the reason is almost 90 percent of the energy used in Nepal is in residential sector. Um, I have three sub uh, divisions under residential sector. The main activities: cooking, lighting, and others. And I have listed some of the fuels. Uh, energy is defined different ways in different countries, but in Nepal. Uh, it's categorized into three divisions. Traditional, which includes biomass. And for biomass, those of you or some relatives who are not familiar, it's like fuel, agricultural residues, and animal dung. And commercial, which is uh, you get in the market like LPG, kerosene, electricity, and some others. And we have alternative, which is basically renewable energy, including like biogas, solar, uh, micro hydro, and all that. And in terms of the area that I have covered, in our census, uh, usually they cover 12 uh, different analytical domains. Uh, but in my study, I have covered 13. Uh, that is, I broke down Terai, uh, sorry, I broke down mountain into uh, rural and urban. Uh, rather than going into detail, just to give you a summary of my research work. First, uh, I consider about like 13 regions and time horizon. I consider about like it's called medium term. Like to, if you look 30 years from now at the 2040, and I've considered four scenarios. One is business as usual, highlighted in yellow, and three other alternative scenarios. But due to time limitations, I'll just probably discuss only business as usual scenario in my later on uh, presentations. And the program that I have used is called the LEAP program. Uh, this I can discuss more later. Now let me uh, go through some of the results. Uh, if you see the, the graph here, it clearly shows that biomass remains the dominant fuel. It's highest among the South Asian countries. If you look at that figure, even in 2040, almost 85% of our energy use in residential sector comes from biomass. And if you look at the other interesting, there are other interesting features here. In terms of commercial energy, both electricity and LPG is going to increase by five folds, uh, which seems big number, but if you compare with biomass, it still is constitutes about like 10% of the total energy use. And similar at the case for alternative energy biogas. Now, if you look at, uh, in terms of rural and urban, in Nepal areas. You clearly see the red one is the rural. Rural household dominates the total residential energy use. Although it's decreased, like I said, just by about like 10% from 2010 to 2040, still about 80% of the energy will be from biogas, which is used in the residential sector. And now if you look at the uh, ecological zone, uh, hill, uses almost 51% of the total energy, followed by Terai, which is about 42%, like and just about 7% by mountain. This also has to do with the population distribution, because in mountain we have less people, so less energy is used in that place. Uh, I, I really like this, this chart, and if you just look at it and just give it a thought, uh, the household energy use patterns, this is uh, from the model uh, I simulated, like for 2040, almost 97% of the total energy use is for cooking in the fall. And just about like 2% for lighting, and about 1% for others. Others here means is like air conditioning, refrigerators, TVs, and radios, which basically use electricity. Uh, there are some dividends among urban and rural, and you can just clearly see blue is the urban and the white is the rural. You see some different numbers on that. But what I would like to highlight is on the bottom row, which is for the US. And this is for the year 2010. Cooking, total energy use is about like 4%. If you look at others, which is about 90%. And this is also part of the things where Nepal stands and how we use our energy. That means we, where we are in terms of using energy. We are very at the bottom of the, uh, which we call energy ladder. And this one also is part of the result from my uh, research study. This is also for 2003. Uh, the 13 analytical domains that I have mentioned is 
listed on the graph on the left, and yellow is the urban regions, and the rest is of the red are the uh, rural areas. And here you can see rural areas and derived central regions combined together, constitute only one fourth of the total cooking energy use. And urban household use relatively less energy. Uh, I, I just want you to just give it a thought why urban uh, household use relatively less energy, and we can discuss this a little more later. Uh, just I'll go quickly. This is about the lighting. Again, here you see uh, definitely urban areas use more lighting because they have access to uh, electricity, while rural areas use relatively less energy for lighting. Uh, this is about the, the uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Also, Dr. Saki has uh, presented about these issues earlier too. My perspective is a little different in terms of this. First, uh, when we talk about uh, energy-related greenhouse gas emissions, it's almost negligible in Nepal. Uh, if you see at the figure for 2009, less than, like about 0.01% of the total CO2 emissions, uh, GHG equivalent is uh, from Nepal. And likewise, I have listed some other countries, China, USA, and India. But climate change is an emerging issue in Nepal. And we do have Climate Change Council established in Ministry of Finance. Uh, my perspective on climate change issues in Nepal is not on the mitigation side, because there are like, two aspects of climate change, uh, how we do it. One is mitigation, the other one is adaptation. So we have to give more priority on adaptation than on mitigation. And just the graph on the left is just uh, how the profile is over time uh, in terms of CO2 uh, equivalent GHG emissions in Kathmandu Valley and the rest of the country. Uh, but important uh, for residential sector or household in Nepal is the local air pollutant. Pollutants like CO, NOx, TSP, and PM10, which are some health effect, uh, impacts on. I'm not going to go in detail. Uh, we can always have a look on this. Uh, let me just go through quickly on my uh, last part. Uh, also, I think most of you already know what are the problems in Nepal, right, in terms of energy use in residential sector. Uh, I just highlighted a few of these. One is the institutional problem. And of course, everybody knows uh, political instability. Institutional problem is like we have seven different ministries which deals with energy. There are two commissions and four corporations and others. It's all kind of like messed up, but there is no any coordinated uh, effort yet. The other one is limited access to modern energy services. This I'll come to this one uh, on the next slide. And of course, we all are familiar about the impact on health from indoor air pollution. And finally, of course, there are lack of uh, awareness, issues like energy efficiency, fuel substitutions, a lot of clean energy issues. Uh, in terms of this limited access to modern energy services, uh, I just want you to focus on the graph. If you see the graph here, the basic human needs for modern energy use is about like 75 on an average. Why Nepal uses in 2010, it's just about 11. That is, we are still about 15% of the basic human needs requirements that we are using energy. And even if you look at the figure for 2040, we still are about like 50% lower than the basic human needs. So we are still far behind in terms of energy needs. Uh, also, some of the health impacts, uh, I have mentioned, I'm not going to go into detail again, Cooking and heating produces very high level of uh, indoor air pollution, and this has more impact, especially for women and children who spend most of the time in the kitchen. Right? Uh, let me just skip this part. Uh, let me just go to. Uh, we often call in, in energy term. We often use energy ladder, and this this is for household cooking energy ladder in Nepal. Now, if you see here, we are actually on the bottom of the curve where biomass is. So majority of our energy use 
we are on the bottom of the graph. So that's what if you say stays warm. And if you look for the medium term for the next 40 years, uh, we still will be probably go to stage two, but we are still far behind. So to go to stage three, there has to be some drastic change in the Nepal. So let me skip this part. Too. Just finally, I would like to just conclude. First, both our government and multilateral and bilateral agencies like World Bank, ADBs, involved in energy programs fail to alleviate energy uh, poverty in Nepal. Especially, uh, these donor agencies have been involved in energy issues for the last 40, 50 years in Nepal. And if you see some indicators now, we still lack far behind. So that means there is some problem. And some of the priority areas for residential energy use, uh, in my view, includes measurable pro-poor energy programs, rather than, say, uh, giving money straight to developing some uh, hydropower infrastructure. We have to look for the rural electrification, for example. For example, supporting the microhydro. But it has to be measurable, like in cooking. In the rural areas, I've listed uh, ICS is improved cook stoves. Um, uh, one of the agency, government agency, Alternative Energy Commission, uh, AEPC, uh, about half a million uh, improved cook, uh, cook stoves have so far been disseminated. And also biogas, about 170,000. And also important issue is efficient use of biomass. Like still, if you go to villages or some places, we still use those three stone uh, kitchen where you use fuel room, and that you probably are familiar with the picture of a child uh, on, on the mother's back and cooking some food and all the smokes are coming out. So those needs to be improved. And also promotion of threats, renewable energy technologies, including solar and all. And it has to be through market reality. Another issue, being as a researcher, uh, one of the problem in Nepal is research and development. We can understand that because it's a developing country. Our priority is more on other developing issues than spending money on research work because other priorities are more important. For example, drinking water, sanitation. But still, uh, when, you, when the donors are there and they want to support the country, these are some of the issues that we have to highlight. Energy database. I want to do research in Nepal, and if I go to the website, only Source I have is Central Bureau of Statistics, CBS. For energy, WEX used to be there, but you don't get any data from there. Mm -hmm. So no matter whether it's a Nepalese or someone else who are doing research in some universities, access to data is very limited. And also finally, decentralization of energy development initiatives. It has to be community based. And just finally, uh, overall picture about the energy use. Uh, this I have been advocating for a long time. You have to restructure India. That is uh, national electricity, uh, our uh, national electricity uh, distribution system, and also horizontal development of vertically organized energy institutions. And finally, uh, market mechanisms like kerosene. This is a successful story. Now, if you see, kerosene is no more used as a, a, a lighting uh, fuel in rural areas because subsidy is removed. So it's a market-based price. So if you see now the graph, it's been declining, the use of kerosene. Mm -hmm. And with that, I would just like to say thank you for all. Thank you. Learn your language. I learned namaste. I'm so sorry that I didn't learn more. But you know what? It's a hard language. <laughs> I also went to China this same trip, and I was going to learn Chinese before I went on this trip. And I learned ni hao, which means namaste. Next time I go back, which you, there will be another time, I will learn your language, I promise. It's very difficult. I don't understand a thing you say. It's not even close to Spanish. I had a great experience last month, just really not too long ago, during the political turmoil, supposedly, in the fall. And I went with my friend, Professor Prabhat Dixit, sitting right over there, who is also a professor, and he teaches at Richland College here in Dallas, a longtime Nepalese. 
uh, person who I was fortunate to meet. I also met a Dr. Prim Adikari, who is also a professor who I teach with from Nepal. I've had 10 students from Nepal at UTA. And so all of a sudden, this last year, I seem to have been surrounded with people from Nepal. Yes, I had heard of Nepal. I don't think I knew where it was. And yes, I heard of Mount Everest, and I forgot that Mount Everest and the Himalayas were somewhere near Nepal. But I have learned a lot about your history and your country since then. Also, I met a guy named Don Wilkes, and Don Wilkes um, founded a nonprofit organization called an NGO called Global Community for Education, which was building schools in Nepal. And he's got a great story. He and his wife decided at the age of 40, they had enough money, they could take a sabbatical or they could take some time out, go around and see the world, and they did. And they ended up climbing Mount Everest. And the man who carried the backpacks and all of the suitcases, etc., to go up the mountain happened to be one of a young man from the valley in a place called... Dadi. Dadi. <laughs> You all know what that is? Dottie District? And Don became very interested in Dottie and found out that he was very intelligent. He told him, you don't need to be carrying bags up here to Mount Everest anymore. You need to go to college. And he found out how, how cheap it was to go to college compared to how expensive it is here. And he said, and I'll send you to college. And he did. And the two of them got together. They fell in love with the valley, he and his wife. And they decided to build a school because the story was that Tonka, was his name, or is his name, Tonka had to walk two hours to go to school every day and two hours to walk back home. And there were a lot of students or a lot of children who can't do that because their parents want them in the field or they want them working. And so the answer was build schools. And seven years later, he asked me if I would be on the board of directors because my past experience, as you have just heard, is philanthropy, which is raising money for nonprofit organizations. And I did that for 30 years, retired from it, because the government told me I was getting too old and I needed to retire. And so I decided I need to do something with my life, so I'm teaching college. And part of my college curriculum happens to be philanthropy. I, the students all come to classes and they give their informative speeches and their persuasive speeches on nonprofit organizations in the United States, states, which is social responsibility causes. In fact, two of my students are here today. I don't know if I told them it was extra credit that they came and gave me support. <laughs> but Emily and Timothy are here. I'm going to see them tomorrow in class, but they are here giving me support. They're going to tell the students how well I did or didn't. Um, so anyway, I have some time on my hands. And I sense the government has told me I'm on the downside of my life. I thought I'd better see the world. And so I decided to go to China. And then Don Wilkes asked me to be on the board of directors uh, for an organization, an NGO in Nepal. And I thought, well, Nepal's right next to China. So while I'm in China, maybe I just need to come to Nepal. So three weeks in May, I did that. I went to China for two weeks. I actually taught some classes at one of a couple of the universities. And my focus was social responsibility, because China wants to know. Why should you and how could you be involved in your community? And what is the importance of being involved with the community? And corporate philanthropy could actually help change countries. So when I came to Nepal and I met Prabhat Dixit, he said, social responsibility, philanthropy, we need this in Nepal. I'm going to Nepal with you. So he came with me and he was already there and he lined up for me to see seven different organizations, colleges, universities, and a couple of NGOs and talk with them. So I will do some of this for you because I'm, I'm all about pictures. My first experience in Nepal was an incredible one. And this was it. And you all have seen this many, many times. And I have video and videos of it that at 6 o'clock in the morning, right around the corner from where I was staying, was this great temple. And I got to go and watch you all pray, start your days out, get these things put on your head, and you get to sit down and kneel in front of the priests who do these things with you. And they put things on your arm like this. And they put these beautiful 
they put tika. water on you. It's called tika. Tika. And then I got to watch the children do the same things. They would touch things and they would take water and they'd splash it on the petals. It was just a beautiful sight. And the bells. And I loved the bells and I loved listening to them. And it was like when I went to college and I had never been to a big city before and I sat on the suitcase on the corner of Kansas City and I thought, wow, these are what people look like, real people look like, with a different culture than what I'm used to. And that's the way I felt in Nepal every morning starting my day like this. And so I adopted, I mean, I don't even know what Hinduism is, but I adopted it. I am one, whatever it is. I bought a book, actually. And I love the idea and the thought and the colors and the sounds and the smells, and I cried. I mean, I did. It just felt so wonderful starting out my day like that, and that was my, one of my beginnings of of Nepal. Well, my, my plan was not necessarily to be in Nepal um, or wasn't to go to the mountains to see the schools for a couple more days, but I was told that the president was going to make a decision on the 27th, which was on a Sunday night, and that I better get to the mountains and get back before he decided whatever he was going to do about the government and your constitution. So Tonka and I rented a four-wheel drive and a driver and his wife, and we headed up to the mountains to a wonderful space and a place. And it was the home of Tonka's mother, wife, the home of uh, Tonka's wife. It was at the top of the mountain without any electricity or water. Eight children, mamas right there on the right hand side, and her children, beautiful children. Very organized, very easy, very simple. They had a special place for me to sleep, which was mosquito netted because the mosquitoes were terrible up there and they knew America was coming and he was spoiled and he probably needed to get away from the mosquitoes. We ate on the floors, sitting on the floor on little benches. And we um, ate with our hands. And we, you know, we put the food in here like this and we did like that. And it was fun. And it was funny. And we laughed at me. And it was, it was a terrific experience, and I loved the experience. But then we went to the schools, and I felt like Bon Jovi. Do you know who Bon Jovi is? I felt like Bon Jovi, because a white man got out of a four-wheel drive with seven Nepalis, and the students started clapping, and they started bringing me flowers. And there were 350 on a Sunday in their uniforms waiting for me because I was on the board of directors of this school. And I gave a little bit of money, and a little bit of money in philanthropy in Nepal goes a long way. And you all know how to thank people by standing up and making them feel good about that they have done something special. And actually 700 students get to go to three different schools that have been built by this global community for education. And it's so cool. It's just a wonderful thing. This is a, a potential school. These kids actually learn underneath the tree because their school is still being built. And this is Tonka, and he's with the Tika because we receive Tika. Where is the development? Where uh, it has to happen? What I think I'm not going to focus on. So, I'm going to talk about the last few matters. What I hear in the last few matters, 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 what I hear in uh, education is the main uh, key. Uh, in the case of 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 the case when I 
मैंने तब मैं यो कार्य नहीं बनने को कार्य हुआ है आई हैव टू क्रिएट माय ओन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन बनने को रहना मात्र है मैं यो यो अस्तित्व कार्य नहीं बनने को तो कर रहा है मौजूदा कि यो यो डा ऑर्गेनाइजेशन मात यो सेल्फ हेल्प डिफरेंट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में मैं इसे इधर फैसिलिटेटर को काम कर रही हूँ जहाँ डेवलपमेंट जो सही, जहाँ डेवलपमेंट होने को आता है, तो उठाओ मत जाए, रियल डेवलपमेंट बाहर नहीं से होनी, मतलब आप लोग नॉट सिक्स को है। त्यां पर, त्यां काम कर गए मतलब एक बार शुरू जाती काम करना फिर ही, तबे अलग खास है माइक्रोफाइनेंस प्रोग्राम से इतनी छुला प्रोग्राम हो, तबे और फॉल्ट हो रुका थी वीकनेस हो रुका थी नॉर्मल डिपार्टमेंट्स हो बोले मैं लिखती हूँ माइक्रोफाइनेंस प्रोग्राम में काम करता थी री कॉस्ट बहुत बनी मेरे जॉब साइन मैं ले मैं ला लाइ ग्रुप कॉर्डिंग कर दी ने अनिवा लाइ लोन को लोन दी ने अनि बिजनेस को अनिवा लाइ लोन लियो कुछ वाले लाइ बिजनेस करना जून महिला आर समझे ऑलरेडी परिशाद सर जून महिला आर समझे ऑलरेडी पोपोटी सर कॉलेज कॉलेज में जो प्रूफ था वहाँ अभी मात्र लोन लेना पाऊंगी वहाँ अभी मात्र प्रोग्राम में इंवॉल्व होना पाऊंगी तो इसमें दो इधर रीजन होते हैं ये उपाय सही ग्रुप ले ट्रस्ट को अनुपात इतने महिला लाइ त्यो कार्यक्रम में इ तीन महिला समझाए संभवतः होने पर ना इमेजिन दिया क्या कॉलेज है तीन महिला लाइक ग्रुप में जाने को सोचते हैं जो पूर्व सा है ना उन ग्रुप लेते हैं उन्हें ट्रस्ट करने पर नहीं बोलना है ना और इमेजिन लेते हैं क्या रिमोट लेते हैं पता चला मालिक क्या लेते हैं पॉसिबली हमने एक ही पूर्व होमलेस कि महिला आ रही जो समझा है संपत्ति थे ना उन्हें उनको कॉलेजर्स थे ना उन्हें होमलेस थे उन्हें अलग से तो प्रोग्राम आकर बिन कितने पाव में सके ना उन्हें हर दिन पाव में दिन हुए कि महिला आ चाहे हम संग आए प्रोग्राम में थे हम लोग भी लोन देंगे उसको प्लीज हम लोग भी प्रोग्राम करना चाहिए इट वाज वो अनिति वर कैसे ही तो केरे महिला तो इसलिए आमने लोने अनिमला जो तेरे इट इट हॉस्ट में ऑल आउट है ना एंड एक्चुअली इट केम डायरेक्शन इन माय लाइफ मैं जब के गरीब बनी व्हाई नॉट वी स्टार्ट द सेम काइंड ऑफ प्रोग्राम दैट वी कैन हेल्प डोज फोरेस्ट ऑफ द पोर वेमेन अनिमला जी मतलब इफ वी आर नॉट वर्किंग फॉर द पोरेस्ट ऑफ द पोर पीपल व्हाई वी हैव टू राइट द रिपोर्ट है ना देन आई आई एम क्विटिंग माय जॉब सो आई केम टू कैफ़न डू आई आई न्यू वन ऑफ़ द अमेरिकन वोम एंड हु गेव मी आई प्रेजेंटेड माय आइडिया टू हर मतलब बने मो मो इस तो माइक्रोफाइनेंस प्रोग्राम का काम क्यों बनी माले जेठ सार मत आ जाते हैं तो पूरा बहुत नहीं आया है ना अनितेश में सिर्फ माले माले दस दस हजार रुपए दिन हुए विच वाज वन हंड्रेड फिफ्टी डॉलर दैट टाइम सीखे में दैट मस्त मनी एंड आई स्टार्ट आई केम टू माय विलेज एंड टॉक टू द टॉक टू वे में आई नो मेन आई नो इबाउट द प्रोग्राम वहाँ तो बनो भाई देखिए ना ट्रस्ट इट मी इन द बिगिनिंग बिकॉज़ आई वाज वेरी यूम एंड आई वाज गर्ल ऑब्वियसली एंड आल्सो फ्रॉम द गर्ल सो इवेंटुअली लेटर उन्हें अब जाइ मला सात दिन था लोग कि महिला महिला आ गई ना अनितेश पची मले त्यो जून एक सौ पचास डॉलर ले आते थे हमारे त्यो एक सौ पचास � मेरे कार्य के मार्ग से थे बने मतलब जब आई वांटेड टू ब्रिंग ओमेन फ्रॉम डिफरेंट कास्ट टुगेदर दैट्स वेयर दे कैन ओर टुगेदर एंड टू क्रिएट द सोलिडारिटी एंड दे कैन फाइट फॉर देयर राइट्स त्योंने मेरे उद्देश्य थे वही ना अंतिम बार मतलब आर लाइ ग्रुप पांच और ग्रुप कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटर पसी त्यो so, I was able to 
वाले थोड़े से बनाऊं भरती हूँ आमले देखो सीट मनी रहो वाले महीना महीना मज़ा जमा करें को सेविंग तेल आते हैं आमले सेविंग हो जो ग्रुप सेविंग तेल का तो महिला तो जैसे एवरी मंथ से वहाँ तो तेरे पैसा से बहुत ही गए अन्य तेरे पैसा ले चल महिला आले जैसे लेट तेरे रोटी तीस बच्ची थी आमला तीन बन खानी थे ना तीन बन थे ना है ना अनेक तीस बच्ची मौसा यहाँ आए यहाँ आए बच्ची हम लोग हम लोग फोन रेट कर रहे हैं हम लोग यहाँ खाली वर्सी स्टार्टर्स को नॉन प्रॉफिट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन संस्थान का और बने दो महीना अपने बाद तेरे तो उसको अमेरिकन नॉर्वे रिटायर ऑर्गेनाइजे� 我们的孩子们，我们的孩子们，yes，啊，我们做这个工作，我们做这个工作，我们做这个工作，我们做这个工作，我们做这个工作，我们做这个工作，我们做这个工作，我们做这个工作，我们做这个工作，我们做这个工
कति महिला र बच्चाहरु चाहिँ भिक्टिम छन् त यो चुलो के धुवा र धुवा भएको चुलो बाट हैन त्यही भएर हामी चाहिँ यो वर्ष देखि धुवा र चुलो पनि बनाउन लागेछ भने त्यो के रे मेडिटेटरी त्यो उसको लागि हामीले यो वर्ष देखि ट्रेनिङ अब हाम्रो दुईटा ट्रेनिङ यही फलमा भइरहेको छ तपाईहरुलाई थाहा छ कति महिलाहरु चाहिँ बच्चा पाउने बेलामा हस्पिटल जान सकिरा हुँदैनन् हैन हामी चाहिँ त्यहाँ चाहिँ मिड वाइफहरुलाई ट्रेनिङ गराएर यो वर्ष चाहिँ लास्ट इयर हामीले तीन जनालाई गराएको थियौँ यो वर्ष चाहिँ हाम्रो अहिले भर्खर दुईटा सय जनालाई हामीले त्यो ट्रेनिङ गराएर त्यहाँ महिलाहरूलाई हेल्प गर्दैछौँ अनि त्यसैले गर्दा म चाहिँ के भन्न चाहन्छु भने जबसम्म हामीले ग्रास रुट लेभलमा काम गर्न सक्दै सक्दैनौँ धेरै कुराहरू कुराहरू हुन्छ धेरै प्रेजेन्टेसनहरू हुन्छ धेरै धेरै देखेका छौँ हामीले तर ती अर्गनाइजेसनहरूले काम गर्ने भनेको मोस्टली टप लेभलमा हो कति पैसा खर्च भयो होला होइन कति त्यो चाहिँ कन्फ्रेन्स र कन्भेन्सनको लागि कति खर्च भयो होला तर हामीले जति जति यहाँ फन्डेन्स गर्छौँ जे गर्छौँ त्यो चाहिँ हन्ड्रेड पर्सेन्ट हाम्रो चाहिँ ओन्ली फिफ्टी पर्सेन्ट हाम्रो चाहिँ ओभर हेड खर्च राखेर बाँकी पैसा हामीले सबै नेपालको नेपालमा खर्च गर्ने हो हाम्रो कुनै पनि त्यत्रो ठुलो के अरे कन्भेन्सन कन्फ्रेन्सहरू हुँदैन हामीले कन्फ्रेन्स गर्ने भनेको त्यो ग्रास रुट लेभल लेभलको महिलाहरूसँग हो त्यही ग्रास रुट लेभलमा गाउँ गाउँमा चाहिँ हामीले त्यो किसिमको त्यो कन्फ्रेन्सहरू गर्छौँ अनि त्यसैले म अन्तिममा के भन्न चाहन्छु भने हामीले यदि डेभलपमेन्टको कुरा गर्छौँ र डेभलपमेन्ट के गर्न चाहन्छौँ भने काठमाडौँमा मात्रै सीमित होइन काठमाडौँ र पोखरा जहाँ चाहिँ एउटा यातायातको सुविधा छ टेलिफोनको सुविधा छ पानीको सुविधा छ त्यो ठाउँमा मात्रै होइन हामीले चाहिँ ग्रास रुट लेभलमा काम गर्नुपर्छ जब त्यहाँ गएर काम ग्रास रुट लेभलमा विकास हुँदैन तबसम्म सिङ्गो नेपालको चाहिँ कल्पना पनि गर्न सकिँदैन त्यसो भन्दै यहाँहरूबाट बिदा हुन्छ धन्यवाद डेभलपमेन्टको बारेमा केही कुरा भन्न गइरहेको छु एउटा यो प्रोजेक्ट छ त्यो हामी यहाँ डेभलप गरेको छौँ जसलाई चाहिँ एएनएले सपोर्ट गरिरहेको छ र अहिले ग्लोबल नेटवर्क्सहरूले विभिन्न किसिमले कलेक्टिभ इन्भेस्टमेन्टको थ्रुबाट सहयोग गरिरहेको भएको छ र म मेरो एपोलोजी यो जुन मैले तल देखिरहेको छु प्रोजेक्ट इन म्यानेज एन्ड रन बाई फुड एन्ड न्युट्रिसन स्पेसलिस्ट डाक्टर स्पिट प्रेस्ट भनेर लामो यतिकै लेखेको छु यो किन लेख्नु इम्पोर्टेन्ट हो भन्दाखेरि धेरै मेरो साथीहरूले एएनएको साथीहरूले एनआरएलको साथीहरूले यो ठुलो प्रोजेक्ट जसले चाहिँ नेपालको रुरल डेभलपमेन्ट रुरल हेल्थ एजुकेसन एन्ड इकोनोमिक डेभलपमेन्टमा इम्प्याक्ट पार्न गइरहेको छ एक्चुअली त्यो प्रोजेक्ट कसले लगिरहेको छ जान्न जरुरी छ र यदि तपाईँले आफ्नो नामको अगाडि डक्टर राख्नु भएन भने तपाईँको कुरा कसरी सुन्दैन भनेर मलाई प्रोस गर्नु त्यसरी मैले त्यो राख्नु दाजु भएको छ आई एम सरी एक्चुअली यो प्रोजेक्टमा एक्चुअली एएनएले फन्डिङ र सपोर्ट गरिरहेको छ र वान हन्ड्रेड थाउजेन्ड डलरको कमिटमेन्ट एएनएले गरेको छ यो कन्भेन्सनबाट पनि हामी धेरै नै फन्ड जेनेरेट गरिरहेको छौँ र विभिन्न अरू कार्यक्रमबाट पनि त्यो कार्यक्रमको लागि फन्ड जेनेरेट गरिरहेको छ र यो फन्ड यो कसरी खर्च गरिरहेको छौँ यो रुरल डेभलपमेन्ट प्रोजेक्ट भनेको एउटा ब्रोड कन्सेप्ट हो त्यसलाई कसरी चाहिँ हामीले इम्प्लिमेन्ट गर्ने भन्ने बारेमा केही स्लाइड्स छ त्यो देखाउन चाहन्छु र नेक्स्ट एएनएको डोनेसनदेखि बाहेक हामीले एउटा ग्लोबल इन्भेस्टमेन्ट फर रुरल नेपाल डेभलपमेन्ट भनेर नेपालको डेभलपमेन्ट गर्नको लागि हामी नेपालीहरू नै उभिनु पर्छ र हामीले नै आफै केही इन्भेस्टमेन्टबाट चाहिँ नेपालको लागि केही गर्नुपर्छ भन्ने हेतुले हामीले एउटा भर्खरै ग्लोबल कम्युनिटी डेभलपमेन्ट इन्क भन्ने एउटा कम्पनी रोजनीमा दर्ता गरेको छौँ र त्यो कम्पनीको हामीले यो अहिले पनि धेरै सेयरहरू यहाँ हामीले वितरण गरिरहेको छौँ र त्यो सेयरको बारेमा आज ज्ञान इन्भेस्टमेन्ट इन नेपाल भन्ने एउटा फोरममा धेरै एक्साइटिङ हाम्रो कन्भर्सेसन भएको थियो र डाक्टर उपेन्द्र महत्व धेरै नै एक्साइटेड भएर मलाई सोध्नु भएको थियो यो प्रोजेक्ट नेपालमा लन्च गर्नको लागि जुन इन्भेस्टमेन्टको कुरा गरिरहेको छौँ कति पैसा लाग्छ भनेर सोध्नु भयो अनि मैले हामीले एक वान हन्ड्रेड डलर पर सेयरको दरमा टेन थाउजेन्ड सेयरलाई हामीले वितरण गर्न खोजिरहेको थियो त्यस कारणले हामीलाई वान मिलियन डलर चाहिँ लाग्छ भन्दाखेरि इफ यू क्यान कन्भिन्स मी आई विल गिभ यू वान मिलियन डलर भन्नु भएको छ त्यो चाहिँ एउटा ठुलो एक्सपिरियन्स भएको छ आज बिहान त्यो कुरा पनि तपाईँहरूसँग सेयर गर्न चाहन्छु र एक्चुअली किन हामीले रुरल डेभलपमेन्ट प्रोजेक्टलाई चाहिँ मैले इन्फ्रासिस दिइरहेको छु भन्ने कुरामा हामीलाई थाहा छ हाम्रो देश एकदमै गरिब छ यो मैले टू थाउजेन्ड नाइनको प्रेजेन्टेसनमा बनाएको स्लाइड हो र अहिले टू थाउजेन्ड टुवेल्भमा मैले स्लाइडमा केही अपडेट पनि गरेको छुइनँ किनभने कुनै किसिमको चित्त बुझ्दो तरिकाको सेटिस्फ्याक्ट्री र सिग्निफिकेन्ट हाम्रो इम्प्रुभमेन्ट भएको छैन र यदि हेर्दा हेर्दाखेरि हामीले के देख्छौँ भन्दाखेरि नेपाल थर्ड बुलेटमा जान्छु लोएस्ट एजुकेसन एन्ड हेल्थ लेभल्स इन एसिया हो र यसमा एट्टी फाइभ पर्सेन्ट अफ युथ हेभ लेस देन टेन इयर्स अफ एजुकेसन 
Uh, the Gauma <laughs> Some sort of agricultural field, Tarapani, I'm your guy, I'm your life, very like Just a food insecurity, Raman, Sunka, and the data I have over 80% of these are 80% of the population works in the field, but 2009 World Food Program to record every money out of 75 districts, 42 districts, they put my Kosika, the 22 districts are chronic malnutrition, or food insecure district of the and Karan Kyo, the Ray Karan Kapan of the Ayi, and USAID Kulo, Rai Parakabama, the future Bani, Rosy Burton, millions of dollars in Pamago, Rayo, Amide, eight Timena, very March twenty first, twenty second, Ami Jones of Kings University, Nepal Q, IOM, Institute of Medicine, Sanga Milera, USAID, the top university to collaboration, and you have a simple thing very quickly. किन <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Ramnam State London School of Hygiene, uh, Norway, University of Professor Orla, Apapno, NGO, NGO, Kutaka, Nepal, Gramin, the Kiki Kango, the Kuriko, 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 the the Kuriko, 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 uh, food and agricultural majors are not in the same way. Plus, uh, food and agricultural majors are not in the same way. Just like that, the food production season is high in the market. Na pairo, na ali, tela, plus, the food production season is high in the market. Plus, the food production season is high in the food production season is high in the market. Plus, the food production season is high in the food production Canada, 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 Canada,
यू डोंट नो बी इट्स कैन कवर द इन्वेस्टमेंट लाभ में जरूरी सा तेज करने लगा था फिर और लोग पूरा थे तो क्वेश्चन लगाओ नहीं होंगे फिर जिसने आइल बकर आम लोग इंडस्ट्री जिले बंद हुआ वे हैव टू गो टू द ग्रास टू लेवल द गांव को फार्मर्स और लाइट में नाला ओनरशिप को फिल कराओ में पक्षा चाहे उन्हें दोसी रुपया को निकलने ना हो उसको क्या प्रोजेक्ट में इंडस्ट्री करा दिया उन्हें दे दे फील दैट दे आर द ओनर ऑफ द प्रोजेक्ट एंड दे प्रोटेक्ट द प्रोजेक्ट है ना गांव में गए रहते हैं उनको रूलर इकोनॉमी में स्ट्रेंथन करने रहते हैं क्यों रूलर इकोनॉमी में स्ट्रेंथन कर रहे थे लाइक चाहिए कौन से नहीं उनसा हेल्थ और एजुकेशन में कन्वर्ट करने रहेंगे गोल से किस ओर जाएगी वन विलेज वन फूड कलेक्शन में प्रोसेसिंग यूनिट स्टार में ये वाला विलेज में रत्यों कम्युनिटी स्कूल को लागे चाहिए ने पांच दिन विलेजर सर को इकोनॉमी स्टेंडर्ड में रहा उन्हें वो फुट प्रोडक्शन बढ़ा था कि पैसा उन्हें तो पैसा बढ़ा थे स्कूल ना लगाने करने वन डिस्ट्रिक्ट वन कम्युनिटी कॉलेज एंड वन फॉर फुल फ्लैश यूनिवर्सिटी पर रूलर पीपल एंड इट्स � दौरान लाइन में टारगेट बनाया रहा बीटा का वाला एनसी लेकर से एक सुन दौरान ना एक कार्य कार्य नहीं बड़ा एक आर्डर ना नहीं तो टीम पर निबंध जाए ऐसे कि नहीं इसको लागी बी में ना लगे नहीं ए ने ले वन थाउजेंड डॉलर भी चाहिए था तो वन थाउजेंड डॉलर ट्रांसफर हुए चाहिए एक सर टू पैसा ले दौरान में टीम बनाया रहा गांव और सामान गांव जिसमें जस्ट इसके में आने दे बिना सब लोग अच्छे हैं तो अंतिम पर जी विलेज मान में आने वाला फूड कलेक्शन और प्रोसेसिंग यूनिटी यूनिट स्थापना कर रहा क्या विलेज सदन इंटरेक्शन करने और विलेज सदन लगानी करने लगानी कर सके बच्चे उन्हर वाले तो साथ में जरिये को सामान डाल लेते हैं ये तो मल्टीपल फूड मार्केट पर बना जैसे रहने लिए यहाँ यूएसए में देखो वॉलमार्ट ओल्ड फूड है ना जाइन लगा कर इसलिए किसी को मल्टीपल फूड मार्केट को स्थापना कर रहा था ये गांव लेर को फूड एंड एडिकल प्रोडक्ट कर रहा है जी तब एक वो मार्केटिंग करने और और वो पूरा हम किन आयुल करान सानी बंदा फिरी वाली फास्ट बच्चों ने आयुल एक प्रोजेक्ट लाइक चाहिए इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमें संग रिलेटेड तीन टेकुरा धारण में सकीन ऐसा बंद है कि धारण में नेपाल के वड़ा मात्रा फूड टेक्नोलॉजी कैंपस है जून फूड टेक्नोलॉजी कैंपस को प्रोफेसर से स्टूडेंट आ रहा है यूज़ करने सकूं आई वड़ा फूड बेटर फूड प्रोडक्ट का लागी और एक वड़ा एग्रीकल इंजीनियरिंग कैंपस से धारण में अब इसको आमिर को अपना भी बन सकते हैं ना बने वो में टाइप को आमिर से ऐसे लीक में चल पड़ा हम सब को तो गांव तो गांव को मैटर लगता होगा और नेपाल की वड़ा आता हेल्थ यूनिवर्सिटी सब बीपी के आए थे तो क्या क्या का डॉक्टर सर उसमें आमिर ने मिले थे गांव करना चाहिए आमिर क्लीनिक अनुसंधा� आ तब एक व्यू और भाई और एक ही कंसोल में इंटरेस्ट रहा सप्लाई कर सुन प्लस आ वो में फूड प्रोडक्शन को लाइक 50 डॉलर हमें उन्होंने लाइक आ 50 डॉलर इक्विवेलेंट को में इंटरेस्ट रहा तो सप्लाई कर सुन अगर आ एप्रोक्सिमेटली आई वन हम लोग बजट में कस्टम सोंग ना फिर ये वाला हाउस वाला आई � डेज पर नहीं चुना है मित्र तुम जला सामो डेज दिन में मंदर जब उस समय तो घर को त्यो घर को बच्चा आ रही है स्कूल में पढ़ता तब उस समय डेज दिन हो जब तो उन्हें ले आपके घर को बच्चा आ लाती स्कूल पढ़ने का घर सेफ मालान्तर दस पर ही आनी एक दिन में डेज दिन चुन तो जो उन्हें लाइक ये किसी को इंसेंटिव हो इफ यू सेंड योर किस टू स्कूल यू डोंट हैव टू पे एन इंटरेस्ट है ना और पैसा जल्दी दे बन उनसा तार पैसा दे दिन पर इट्स नॉट फॉर फ्री आ अन्य इतने वैसे के बच्चे आम लोग इधर मार्केट स्ट्रेटजी सा मार्केट स्ट्रेटजी वाला आम लोग प्रॉफिट उनसे तो प्रॉफिट वाला सही आम लोग आ रूलर डेवलपमेंट को काम करते हैं उसमें आम लोग इधर फ्लो डायग्राम्स और आयल वगैरह में तो आयल बने तो वही वो आ ए ने ले गरने रूलर डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम ए ने ले किसान नॉलेज ही इन्वेस्टमेंट करता है उन्होंने लाइक ट्रेनिंग दी जाए ये नहीं तो वहाँ उनके थाउजेंड डॉलर बोटा हाई मिले थे फूड प्रोडक्शन इंक्रीज कराई थी वाले और मार्केटिंग के बारे में मार्केटिंग करने को आगे आने से ये जीकोट बने रहे ग्लोबल कम्युनिटी डेवलपमेंट बने रहे कंपनी खराब � जो ले इन्वेस्टमेंट करता है बुलाए जाने से तब वाले इन्वेस्टमेंट करने वाले 50 परसेंट प्रॉफिट तब वाले जाते हैं 50 परसेंट प्रॉफिट को ये क्या आह रूरल हेल्थ एंड एजुकेशन फाउंडेशन आई मिलता हूँ तो फाउंडेशन बढ़ा तो गांव के स्कूल को तो गांव को बचा लाएंगे पढ़ाऊँ सुन 
त्यो फाउन्डेसनमा आएको पैसाबाट चाहिँ हाम्रो चिल्ड्रेन न्युट्रिसन प्रोग्राम छ एटलिस्ट उनीहरूले चाहिँ एक साथ चाहिँ राम्रो खाना पाउँछ पाउनु पर्छ भनेर स्कुलमा हामी न्युट्रिसन प्रोग्राम एउटा एक एक टाइमको लन्च हामी प्रोभाइड गराउँछौँ र इन्फेन्ट एन्ड म्याटर्निटी हेल्थ अहिले विश्वजित भन्नु सक्नुभयो हाम्रो इन्फेन्ट एन्ड म्याटर्निटी डेप्स एन्ड एक्सम हाई छ किनभने अनहाइजेनिक हाम्रो बर्थ अथवा त्यो म्याटर्निटी को सिचुएसन त्यस्तो छ विथ द्याट र यो चाहिँ मेरो सानो फिगर त अस्ति त्यही मार्चमा गएको बेलामा मैले गाउँहरू छाउँदा फेरि गराएको थिएँ र यति भन्दै इफ यू आर इन्ट्रेस्टेड टु कन्ट्रिब्युट होइन फर यु कन्ट्री तपाईँको आफ्नो देशको लागि केही गर्न चाहनुहुन्छ तपाईँ फिजिकली जान चाहनुहुन्न तर केही गर्न चाहनुहुन्छ भने एउटा सेयरको हन्ड्रेड डलर दिनुहोस् सेयर दिनुहोस् तपाईँको पैसा रुरल फुड डेभलपमेन्टमा रुरल मार्केटिङमा र मैले हिजो खोसेक अनुसार तपाईँको पैसा खर्च हुन्छ र म आफै त्यो प्रोजेक्टलाई इम्प्लिमेन्ट गर्नको लागि नेपाल जाँदैछु र मैले अघि तपाईँ भनिसकेँ यसको ग्यारेन्टी के छ त भन्दाखेरि वान हन्ड्रेड डलर डलर इज नट बिग एमाउन्ट अफ मनी होइन तपाईँले तर ग्यामल नै गर्न सक्नुहुन्छ अरू कुरा अब म आफै नेपाल यहाँ युएसएबाट पिएचडी गरेँ हार्डवेयर र मसँग जन साप्तिकको एउटा ट्रेनिङ छ त्यो ट्रेनिङ लिएर म नेपालको गाउँमा जाँदैछु त्यो एनदर एस्टुरेन्ट छ र थर्ड एस्टुरेन्ट के हो भन्दाखेरि आज बिहान मात्र मैले अघि पनि भनिसकेँ कि रिपिट गर्न चाहन्छु कि एनआरएन का संस्थापक अध्यक्ष डक्टर उपेन्द्र महतोले चाहिँ वान मिलियन डलरको कमिटमेन्ट गरिसक्नु भएको छ म त्यति एक्साइटेड हुनुभयो कि यो प्रोजेक्टलाई तिमी लिएर नेपाल जान्छौ र गाउन बस्नु भने तिमीले वान मिलियन डलरको जुन तिमी सेयर काट्दैछौ त्यो पनि कन्टिन्यू गरेर र आई विल आई विल इन्भेस्ट वान मिलियन डलर फर दिस प्रोजेक्ट गर्नुभएको छ थ्याङ्क यू